Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to talk about the sizing panel of the color tab. So in this sizing panel, which you can get to just by going over here past key and clicking on sizing, uh, there are five subsections of the panel, including edit sizing, input sizing, output sizing, node sizing, and reference sizing. So with edit sizing, it's referring to the edit tab. So you can actually change your uh, basically your sizing, which can include all different kinds of attributes like zoom, position, pitch, and yaw, inside of the edit tab of DaVinci Resolve. And any changes you actually make on each individual clip here, since uh, these inspector attributes apply at the clip level, are actually going to be mirrored here in the edit sizing section. So uh, if you change, make a change here, like you pan the clip a bit, that's going to be affected back in edit mode as well. So next up we have input sizing, which is very, very similar to edit sizing in that it affects the clip you currently have selected. And actually the changes you make here in input sizing will be reflected back here in the edit uh, tab, um, but they will not show up in the inspector. So if I set a pitch in the color tab, so if I kind of scale this backwards to tilt the top of the frame forward and the bottom backwards, it will show up in the preview window here, but it does not show up in the actual inspector of the edit tab. Uh, but beyond that, it's essentially the same. It's just that those attributes aren't reflected on the edit tab. Next up, we have output sizing. And output sizing applies the changes you make here to the sizing to all clips in the timeline. So if you want to do something on a global scale, you can do that very easily here. So for instance, I could zoom everything uh, really inwards. And what that's going to do is it's going to fall, affect all of the clips. So you can see all five of these different clips now uh, are zoomed out, which it might be something you want. Uh, but in any case, if you have a change that you need to make on a global scale, uh, that's where you do it with output sizing. And next up is node sizing. So nodes are different than individual clips in the node section. We have an input point, a couple nodes, and then an output point. So with these nodes, which can be simple correctional nodes, but also other types of nodes we can call uh, add-in, like parallel mixer and key mixers. We'll be talking about that more in future videos. Um, and we pass the input through all of these different nodes, and it will change the ultimate output. Now, when we do node sizing, it's done at the individual size for these nodes. So if I double click on one node and I make a change, that's only going to be applied at this specific node level. And of course, this will get more useful when you have a more complicated node system and uh, you have different inputs and outputs going on. And maybe you want to apply something like a width change to a color correction that only affects like so anyway, if I was to select one of these nodes and change the parameters down here, like the width, you can see that it only affects the node I have selected here. Um, now, in this particular setup, it wouldn't make much sense because all of these nodes are directly connected. So to get to the output, the changes I make here are going to be affected on everything else. But, but if I was to branch things off, for instance, adding in a parallel mixer, and then I have this node connected there, and then the parallel mixer is actually the final output. And I right click and add in a different corrector. And in this node, I have vastly different things going on than in this node. Maybe I actually have a series of nodes up here. And I could do something like add a color change here, which will affect the final clip because we have this parallel mixer. Um, but we do that without affecting this node down here. So. So for right now, what's important to know is that you can make changes at the node level. Um, and depending on how your setup is, that those changes won't affect all of your nodes. So you can kind of split things off. And uh, the end result you would get at this node would be affected by this node over here. But this number two node would have no impact on what happens in node five up there. And we'll be talking more about nodes and what you can actually do with them in a future video. But yeah, for now, just know that node sizing changes your sizing at the node level, which refers to your nodes up here. 
Okay, now lastly, we have reference sizing. So reference sizing isn't actually referring to anything in your final output, but rather you can create stills while you're in the, uh, the color tab. And how you would create a still is you right click and you click grab still and that's going to pop a still over here which is essentially like a screenshot of your video as it was in this preview window and if we click over here in the preview window where it says image wipe what we can do is take these stills and use them as a reference comparison to what's actually occurring in the uh, the current working video clip so these stills are just a reference shot they don't move and they're not actually outputted. But what you could do with this theoretically is you can compare one instant shot or basically one frills and frame to the clip as you're actually working with it. And when you change the reference sizing down here, that's only going to be changing things with the image wipe. So if I say increase the height over here, you can see it doesn't affect the actual clip in the background. It's only changing the reference shot. And we could use the same references for all the clips, or you can just change them by double clicking on each of the stills over there. But as soon as you don't want to work with a still, uh, a still reference, you can just click image wipe again, and that's going to disable it. So all that you're left with is your actual clips there. So that's going to be everything you need to know about the sizing tab in DaVinci Resolve 14. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.